How are you getting on with um, the concept of upper motor neurons versus uh, lower motor neurons? <clears throat> Could you um, tell me what the difference means, you know, with respect to a stroke patient um, or a spinal cord injury patient or a peripheral nerve injury patient? Ooh. Oh, I like that one. It's a concept that, you know, it's one of those things that I can <laughs> keep going on about. Um, I, it, sometimes students get it first time. Sometimes it takes them the first year, second year, uh, third year, fourth year. Eventually they get it. And once it clicks, it clicks. But I'd like to make that process faster. So I've got a wet Sunday afternoon. I've got some, uh, what are these called? Nudes. <clears throat> Gonna have a crack at an idea. Um, that we've been thinking about for a long time and that is making the, making the nervous system, making a simple model of the nervous system. Upper motor neurons are in the central nervous system. They run from the motor cortex down through the brain, cross over in the brain stem, well 90% of them do, cross the other side of the body, descend through the spinal cord. That could be our upper motor neuron and then they synapse with a lower motor neuron uh, in the spinal cord, and that lower motor neuron will then carry the action potential on out of the central nervous system, into the peripheral nervous system, and onto a skeletal muscle. And that two neuron chain, that pattern, that, that pathway, that layout, that format, that schematic, once you get that idea, uh, you've got it, right? Damage to an upper motor neuron gives different signs and symptoms to the damage to a lower motor neuron. With a stroke, you're damaging the brain, so that's upper motor neurons. With a spinal cord injury, you're damaging upper motor neurons, right? Um, so there will be a loss of function. You know, you will want to move muscles on the other side of your body and be unable to because the upper motor neuron has been damaged. But the tricky bit is with reflexes. So, you know, there's um, a biceps tendon reflex and a patella tendon tap reflex. Well, that reflex runs essentially from the muscle, so stretch receptors in the muscle, send sensory information back to the spinal cord, and then there's a reflex within the spinal cord that then goes back to the muscle to tell this one to contract and this one to relax, so that when, the, when you tap the tendon, you get a reflex response. So that doesn't use upper motor neurons, it just uses the lower motor neuron. So the sensory bit goes in, lower motor neuron drives the contraction of the muscle. However, the upper motor neuron, one of its jobs is it will dampen that reflex a little bit, which means that if somebody has injured a lower motor neuron and then you do a, um, a tendon, a deep tendon reflex test, the reflex will be intact because the lower motor neuron is intact but because the upper motor neuron has been injured, it's no longer dampening down that reflex, so it will be hyper-reflexive. Do you see how we started off from a simple premise and things got more complicated? So what I'd like to be able to do is to get these to be upper and lower motor neurons. And I've got a little Raspberry Pi here, so this is a, a, a full computer, and it's got these very useful input-output pins that I can control things with and detect senses. I've got some little switches here. Can I, there's a breadboard for linking all this together. Can I set up a circuit so that we have an upper motor neuron lights up and then a lower motor neuron lights up? This is one of those ideas that we've been thinking about for years and I, I just can't get into my head as to whether it's useful or not. But it'll be pretty anyway. So I'm going to prototype it and that'll hopefully give me a better idea of whether it's useful or not. I can test it on other people. Test it on you guys. You can tell me whether it's useful or not. And Chris um, has been running um, a neuroanatomy, mo neuroanatomy module for the last couple of weeks and he built with 3D printing sections of the, of the brain and the brainstem and the spinal cord and then you could wi run wires down it to build the tracts of the central nervous system to help understand that. So it's like, could we use that plus this to create something where you press a button 
it demonstrates what an upper motor neuron is, what a lower motor neuron is. If this bit works, I can add a display. Do I add muscles to it? Do we do a separate sensory track one or do we put it all on one board? I don't know. This is just a play start, right? Okay, let's figure this out. I think I've got pin 23 coming out and going to the red wire, which is going to be the upper motor neuron. Pin 24 is connected to the pink wire, which will be the lower motor neuron. <clears throat> pin 25 is connected to the button input. And they're then connected to the ground rails. The button's got a big resistor in there. So now I need to write a little bit of code in Python and run it on the Pi so that it'll look for that switch closing because it's, it's a moment switch, momentary switch. And then in response to that, it'll switch on the red wire for a certain time interval. And then the pink wire a little bit later. We'll play with the times and see what it looks like, right? Um, so <laughs> coding time. This is what physical computing is like. Is <clears throat> It's great fun because you can use software to switch physical things on and off and get physical inputs. But um, you do need to kind of check that you've got the physical stuff wired in properly so that if the software doesn't work, you know, it's the software, not the physical stuff. Right. Next. So the Pi is there. <clears throat> I'm on my um, laptop and I've SSH'd into the Pi. So over my wireless network, I've connected to it and I'm writing my Python code. It's all coming back to me. Um, let's see. For one, I'm using some online resources to remind me of what I do, right? But let's see if I can remember how to code in Python. It's a lovely language to code in. It's great fun. And let's see if my stuff is actually wired up. As I think it is, right? Okay, this should just give a couple of flashes. Whee! I think, I think that's it. So now if I press the button, oh, oh, okay, that was too easy. <laughs> so now you need to use your imagination a little bit, but imagine this on a board and there's a button there that's labeled, I don't know, motor. And on that board, we have, we have a brain up here and this is running through the brain and down the brain stem and down the spinal cord. And then this is running from the spinal cord and out to, I don't know, a muscle. Maybe there are labels for these, upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron, or maybe there's a little display that flashes up upper motor neuron, lower motor neuron. And you press the button and upper motor neuron, lower motor neuron. Unbelievable, that actually did work first time. That never happens. I know it's simple code and but there's always something that goes wrong, right? What do you think? Um, it's just trying to nail these concepts. A lot of teaching is picking out the concepts that you know students struggle with and then making it super obvious, blindingly obvious, so that students think, oh, oh, that's obvious. Why, why have you built this thing to explain that thing that's obvious? Because I know this is an issue. So. Because this is in software as well, um, you can do so much with it. So like I say, I could have a motor model, I could have a sensory model, I could have a little display showing all sorts of things. I don't know. This, is, this was literally just a, when you've built it, when it physically exists. <laughs> do you think it's a useful thing? Do you think it's a useful thing? I've made some video and some photos and stuff, so I'll share with my colleagues and see what they think, see what students think. This is a, a prototype of an idea. This is an idea that's been floating around forever. And I finally got around to, um, to building something. Hey, if you're just making pretty light switch on and off with code is, is a fun Sunday anyway. 
If you want to try this sort of thing, Raspberry Pi is cheap, Python is a fun language. If you want to learn coding, that physical programming of using software to switch physical things on and off, is, it feels great. It's very, very rewarding. And obviously I've been doing this long enough um, that I know the steps to go through to make sure that it works. But, yeah, uh, motor output, brain, upper motor neuron, lower motor neuron, blindingly obvious. Building working prototypes like this, if nothing else, it, it, it promotes discussion, um, gets, other, gets other people thinking about other ideas, other things you could do with it, or um, it gets an early, no, it's not really worth doing, so you don't waste too much time building a huge, great big thing. Um, but let me know, what do you think? Um, can you imagine what I'm talking about? Maybe I'll take some photos and stick them on Instagram of Chris's brain model, but a lighty up wire model of the tracks of the nervous system, upper motor neurons and lower motor neurons, three, um, three, the three neuron chain of the sensory inputs going to the thalamus and beyond, um, the dorsal columns versus the spinothalamic tracks, you know, where they cross over at different levels, that sort of thing. And you could probably, couldn't you, you could program different programs to say the injury's here, or the injury's here, or the injury's here, and then you'd see those neurons not firing. See, it's making my neurons fire already, just uh, now I've got a physical thing in front of me. I was lacking a bit of imagination, I think. Anyway, right. Uh, you might see this again in the future. <laughs>